let's take a look at that. I still have this on the board here. Unfortunately, I erased the other one, but I have that my current through my capacitor is equal to this right here. This would be the magnitude of the current. It's the amplitude of my current function. And so for my capacitor, I is equal to epsilon sub naught C omega. Epsilon sub naught is equal to I over C omega. Or putting it into this form right here, epsilon sub naught is equal to I times one over omega C, more traditionally omega comes first. This right here is my capacitor reactance. We have a formula here. Capacitive reactance is equal to one over omega C. For my inductor, I had epsilon sub naught cosine of omega t is equal to L t sub c, but v sub L. So v sub L is equal to, oh wait, no. Epsilon naught over L cosine. We we producing. I think I left something off last time. The I T. And so I is equal to epsilon naught over omega L sine omega T. I think I left. For some reason my memory is like something different for the coefficient here. So my current through the inductor is equal to epsilon naught over omega L. Putting it into my form over there, epsilon sub naught is equal to omega L times I. In other words, this omega L here is my inductive reactance. So notice that when I'm dealing with my capacitor reactants and throw a resistor in there, the voltage across the resistor is equal to I times R. They don't call it resistive react uh, reactants, it's just resistance. But this is Ohm's law. Ohm's law applies to the magnitudes. So throw that in over here. Applies to amplitudes. And then Kirchhoff's rules, when we originally did the voltage loop there, Kirchhoff Kirchhoff's rules apply to instantaneous values. And now we have all the pieces in place to solve any of these AC circuit problems. The difficulty that people face when they're doing the AC circuit problems, though, is you get to a certain point where you're going, have I done this right? You get into the, the panic spiral of you don't think you've done it right, and so you're thinking, all right, how much more time am I going to spend on this? And well, if I haven't done it right, then I'm wasting time, and then you know, before you know it, you just stop. There's a certain amount of blind faith that you are doing it right. So let's go through one, and let's see if we can do it right. I 
I do also want to point out, I have a formula over there for the capacitive reactants, a formula over there for the inductive reactants. Those formulas are set. I did not give you a formula for the impedance. There is not a formula for the impedance. It is very much specific to the problem itself. In the summary section of the textbook, I believe they do give you a formula for impedance. That is for a very specific case. A lot of the problems are designed around what is the impedance of the situation. And so let's do one of those. And let's first go with the one that the textbook does, which I believe is the RLC series circuit. I'm not going to start out doing a voltage loop. That's basically how we derive the components, but we're going to now solve it using the phasor diagram. So first off, is there anything that's going to be common to everything in here? Voltage is the same for all of them. You're saying that the potential drop difference across here, across here, across here, and across here are all the same all the time. Are you good with that? Or if this were a DC circuit, resistor, 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 would the voltage across here be the same as there, there, and there? Well, they all have the same voltages. No. Yeah. Same is true over here. Yeah. Voltage is not the same. What's the other one? Current. Yeah, current is going to be the same. It's all in series. The current will all be the same. So when I'm doing my phasor diagram, the first thing I'd like to do is draw down the thing that's common to the most things. Uh, if you've got something common to everything in the circuit, great. Those are the simple ones. The current of my power supply, current of my capacitor, uh, current for the resistor, current for the inductor. So are you, is, it, is there a difference between instantaneous current and uh, capital I current? It, yes, the instantaneous current is whatever that length there is, where this angle here is omega t. So when you're labeling it, you label it by the magnitude. That's just tradition that you label it. And because they're all the same, basically I've drawn four vectors that are all right on top of each other. Sorry, four phasers that are right all, all on top of each other. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Voltage, on the other hand, is not the same for all. So the voltage across the resistor, I know it is in phase with the current. So my voltage across the, for, across the resistor I draw a phasor in phase with the current or the resistor. I'll label this as V sub R. For the voltage of the capacitor, I know the current leads the voltage of the capacitor by pi over 2. So my current's there, it leads the voltage, and again, think of phasers as air is spinning around counterclockwise. That is a right angle there. This is V sub C. Inductors, my voltage, my current lags from the voltage, in other words, voltage leads, and so for the inductor,
So the voltage from the power supply, which I haven't drawn yet, I should have an inductor and a voltage for each of the components. The voltage for my power supply, I know is going to be the sum of these three. And so I need to add my three voltage phasers here. And I'm going to redraw this one right here just because it's a little bit more off than the other one is. And now I'm going to make VC smaller. Alright. I don't know which, based on the information I've given you, I don't know which one's bigger, BL or VC. So you just pick one's bigger than the other. Alright, so I have these three. Think of it as adding three vectors here. I got one going this way, one going that way, and one perpendicular to it. When I add them, I'm first going to add the two that are directly opposite each other. Since I made VL bigger, again, that's just the stylistic choice. The sum of these two is going to be a vector that is this side, and it'll have a magnitude of VL minus VC. That's the sum of the, the inductor and the capacitor voltages. And now I add in my resistor here. Again, I'm adding them like they are vectors. In other words, whichever way I want to do it. The voltage from my power supply, let's be a straight line. That's the voltage from my power supply. It's the sum of the three other voltages. And I'm making a right triangle there. I know that epsilon sub naught is my hypotenuse there, so epsilon sub naught squared. If I can find a better marker than that, maybe, is equal to VR squared plus VL minus VC squared. If you had chosen VC to be bigger, then this would have been VC minus VL, but it's still squared, so it really doesn't matter which one you pick. So first thing, you draw what, in this case, if something is common to every, all the components, you draw that first, and then you draw the, either the voltage or current, whichever one you haven't done, next. For the power supply, it's the sum of the other voltages. Well, in series, it's the sum of the other voltages. And now bring in my rules over there. I know that voltage is equal to current uh, across the resistor voltage. Rewind. I know the voltage across the resistor is current times resistance squared. Plus VL is IXL minus IXC squared. So all I've done is just plug in our Ohm's law of variations. I guess I had written it over there. I factor I out, and so I'm left with I squared times R squared plus XL minus XC squared. I know what XL and XC are. Those are set formulas over there. So I get epsilon sub naught squared. That's what blue is doing. Equals I squared times R squared plus omega L squared minus 1 over omega C squared. That again. Omega L minus 1 over omega C, that whole quantity squared. Just substituting the end for these two. And ultimately, I'm trying to find the impedance. Well, my impedance formula is that the magnitude of my voltage across my power supply is equal to the current times the impedance. So I just need to get in that form. Well, let's take the square root of both sides, and I get epsilon sub naught is equal to I times the square root of 
R squared plus omega L minus one over omega C plus quantity squared. That is the formula for my impedance for the RLC series circuit. And I cannot emphasize enough, the formula for the impedance depends upon the circuit. Do not look at that formula right there and go, oh, I have the formula. Whenever you ask for impedance, that's what I'm just going to plug into. Don't. So it's better to derive on the rise. Absolutely. Oh, we got plenty of time. All right. Other questions at the moment? Let's do another one. Let's do the RSC parallel circuit. Now I suspect at some point some of you already pictured what the first phaser I'm going to draw is. Drawing voltage first? Yeah, absolutely. And again, I draw the first quadrant because that's what I do. And that's supposed to be a comma there, not a J. So again, I draw four vectors right on top of each other. They're all identical. Uh, so typically, you physically draw it once and just label it four times. And now the currents. Where is my current phasor for resistance going to be drawn? Can't say. Say again. Current for resistance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and phase with the voltage. All right, uh, inductor is next. Where am I drawing my current for the inductor? The current phaser for the inductor. Second question. Second or fourth? One of those two. Fourth or fourth. Fourth. Yeah, four, four, four. Four, eleven. So no, these arrows are spinning around counterclockwise in current lags. So it's indeed fourth. And then my current phaser for capacitance. Second. Second. Now, whichever one you draw bigger, I L or I C, just pick one. Uh, I again I drew drew the capacitor one shorter than the inductor one for no reason other than my whim. I'm still trying to find impedance. So basically, I'm trying to get this into the form of epsilon is equal to I times Z. So this is the basically the current coming from the power supply. So I need to actually let's go ahead and write that down. Power supply. Uh, I need to add my three current phasers, and so I start out with the ones that are opposite each other, and so that's going to end up with. working well, a phaser in this direction, IL minus IC. If you drew your capacitor one longer, then you'd have it in the other direction, it would be an IC minus IL.
and then I have to add that to R, and I'm left again. Hey, quadratic formula pops up yet one more time. I have the current for my power supply, that's this black line right here, is equal to that squared is equal to IR squared plus IL minus IC squared. So now I make my substitutions. I'm going to take a dramatic pause here. Some people are still writing in the chance to catch up. So my daughter's doing TikTok videos. And uh, when talking to her last night, sort of came up as good idea for TikTok videos, reaction videos to my physics videos. <laughs> That'll be exciting. That'll get the likes for her. All right, so I know that epsilon is sub naught is equal to the i of the power supply divided by r times z, so if I divide both sides by z, I basically get epsilon sub naught over z squared equals IR, which is the voltage from the power across the resistor, which is the same, epsilon sub naught over R squared plus epsilon sub naught over XL minus epsilon sub naught over XC squared. I have epsilon sub naught common to all of them, so I can just factor that out. So I have 1 over Z squared is equal to 1 over R squared plus 1 over omega L minus omega C quantity squared is equal to the square root of all that. And so my impedance for the RLC parallel circuit is 1 over the square root of 1 over R squared plus 1 over omega L minus omega C. Similar in some structure to the other one, but obviously very different. So these are all very standard. They're really convenient to have the same uh, phaser to cover all the currents or all the all the voltages. Now let's change that. Let's make it a little bit harder because we're all ready. We built it up slowly, and you're all experts. And if what you get is different from what I got, obviously I'm going to need you and make sure you give me a contestable book. Any questions on this before we look at something more difficult? problem that comes from the previous textbook that we used. Start off with 70.
and that's the problem. So the question is, where do we begin? Because we've got a parallel series here. So where do we begin? Yeah. Spacer diagram? Oh, yeah, okay. What's the first spacer we draw down? Let's see if it's a voltage drop. So, do you want to start there? That's where I would start. I don't know what the best way to start would be. Let's try it. I, I try to look at, see if I know what I started with. But, and this is up here. It's different. I, I started with, instead of the voltages there, I started with the current. Those two currents were the same, but we should end up in the same place. All right, so the voltage there is the same, and so again, I start out first quadrant, so that's VL and VC. Once I have those Vs, I can do the Is. Where do I draw my, my, my current spacer for capacitance? Leading, leading voltage. Yep. So the second quadrant. Supposed to be a right angle there. So that's I C C. And I sub L. And for whatever reason, I'm drawing I sub L slightly smaller. It should definitely be in opposite directions. I'm going to pretend that I'm just physically drawing smaller. I know that whatever current flows into this junction right here has to flow out. So the sum of the current flowing across the inductor and the sum of the current flowing across the capacitor should add up to the current flowing out across the resistor. So IR should be just the sum of these two currents right here, which is somewhere along that line. I made IC bigger, so I'm going to draw in that direction. So this is IL minus IC which is equal to IR and ITS. So I've got uh, two voltages and three currents down. Actually, I have all four currents down. some length, whatever it happens to be. And I just try to simply draw it smaller and smaller. I know the voltage drop across my capacitor is going to be the sum of the voltage drop across my resistor plus the whatever my voltage drop is across these two. So I'm adding these two together. Epsilon sub naught. And so epsilon sub naught squared is equal to VR squared plus 
I'm going to call it VLC squared. It's the same voltage, so it can be either labeled as VL or VC. That was the issue I was having. I was looking at the solution for 71 for a different problem. <laughs> and so this is I for the power supply, uh, Z squared is equal to I R squared plus I, well, those are all the same I there, this is I L minus C times X. And a little XLC here, I have to somehow come up with the reactants, the, the combined reactants of my two parallel components right there. Let's take a look at that. I know that IR is equal to IL minus IC. ILC, this is what we have right here, is IL minus IC, or the way I did it. IC minus IL. And that is equal to well, from over there, VC over XC minus VL over XL. 